Today's video is packed full of unique nature and garden inspired DIYs. Welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. So for our first garden inspired project, we're going to be making a fire pot. Now I picked up this pot from the thrift store and I'm also going to be using a can of chafing fuel picked up from Dollar Tree. You can get other types of gel fuel from hardware stores or garden centers. Whichever one you use, please follow the manufacturer's instructions. So you're also going to need some tin foil or an alternative would be to use a tin can or some kind of fireproof or heat proof container that you can place your canister inside. I didn't have anything like that, so I am creating my own by using some tin foil. So I'm using heavy duty tin foil and I'm just wrapping it around my canister several times. So stay with me on this one. I will show you the reason why I am doing this in the end as in the original video, I had several people ask me why I did this. It makes it so much easier to use this fire pot if you need to replace your canister. So I'm going to just continue to add layers of foil to this to create my little container. And then I remembered I had this foil tape in my stash. So I decided to use this as well, and this really helps to create a nice, sturdy little holder for my canister. So this video is a compilation video. I will have some chapters as well as the playlist to all the original content in the description box below for you. So you can check that out. And this is going to be filled with either nature or garden inspired DIYs. So that foil tape is working really well. So I decided to add another little square on the inside on the bottom, but I have the piece sticky side up. This will just help to seal the whole entire foil piece together. You can see here the sticky side is up and then I'm going to push my foil down onto it and then I'm going to take another piece and stick it on top and that will seal it all together on the bottom. You can see how easy it is to pull the canister out, but I felt like it wasn't really sturdy and it also had quite sharp edges. So I decided to just add a few strips of my foil tape around the edge and that will just make it sturdier and also prevent you from getting cut. So you can see how nice that canister just slips in and out of this little foil container that I made. You can make it as sturdy as you want, add as many layers as you want. So once that is complete, or if you're, you're using a can, then you can move on to this step and that is by adding your rocks into your container. Now I'm going to make sure that the rim of my little canister is just below the rim of my pot. And so I first fill up the pot with rocks and then put my canister in once it is at the height that I desire. Then fill in around with the rocks and you can see I am able to add some rocks over the canister so you can barely see it. So I just wanted to show you here, look, the rocks are not caving in around my canister and that canister comes in and out of there so easily so you can replace it if you want or if you need to add more fuel to this. So to use this, you'll want to pull the canister out and then you wanna pop off the rim, or sorry, the lid of this canister by using a flat head screwdriver. So it pops off really easily. Again, depending on where you get your canister, I have seen them at hardware stores and at garden centers. So um, just follow the instructions for your canister. So you can see how easily it just slips in there Let's take it outside once I get all the rocks back into place and we'll show you how it looks and how easy it is to light it up. So here it is on my sun deck and voila, it lights up so easily. It looks beautiful. 
I am definitely going to want to try some other gel fuels as they create a different flame. This one is quite a low flame, but yeah, I've got to try and find some. So I'm really happy with this. We still use it all the time in the summer and it's easy to snuff out by putting the lid right back on. So for this next project, it is a nature inspired project and you'll need a scrap wood block. I picked this up actually from a scrap pile at a construction site. So I'm going to give this two coats of some cream craft paint. Use any color that you would like. Um, I'm going with the cream because I want a real contrast with this and another particular color I'll be showing you up next. So you let that dry well once you've got it covered. Once dry, you are gonna then add a piece of fabric. So I am using this beautiful green burlap fabric I had in my stash and it was the perfect size to fit inside this block. I just created a frayed edge by removing some of the strands. And you can see the contrast of color. So I'm gonna be using Aileen's tacky glue to adhere the fabric to the wood block. Use any glue that you love to use. I'm just gonna use a plastic card to spread it out and I'm just applying it just enough so that the fabric will uh, attach to it onto the block, but I didn't go too far to the edge. I press my burlap into place and add extra glue as needed. So I allowed this to dry and I like to flip things like this upside down and add some weight to it. So once dry, I decided to add this unique touch and that is some carpeting tacks. I had these in my stash. I can't remember where I picked them up honestly, but I thought they would look so sharp against the green fabric. So I'm just hammering those into place in each corner and look how much high end it looks. So for my touch of nature, I am going to use this paper butterfly. I picked this up from my local dollar store. You can get them at Dollar Tree as well. And then I'm also going to add some beautiful words that I have. These are Tim Holtz word stickers. And I have these linked in my Amazon affiliate store if you are interested, but you can also get these at craft stores such as Michael's. I'm going to attach these using my tacky glue and you'll just apply that and then spread it out evenly and press them into place. Again, I'm gonna flip it upside down, add some weight and allow it to dry. So once dry, I always like to put a little bit of black outlining around my words that really helps them to pop. You can also use some ink if you choose, but that is it. This was such a simple project and it has an impact. I love this piece. I still use it today and I love butterflies. So this is perfect for our home decor. So this next nature inspired project is a literal trash to treasure. I had this box in my stash and I thought it would be perfect for kind of a shadow box look, but as you can see, it was falling apart. So I am just putting it back together using my glue gun. And then once you have that fixed, if that part is needed, I am then going to be decoupaging some sewing tissue paper onto this box. So use any type of decoupage glue that you like to use. I like either the uh, Deco Art brand or Artist Mine. Then you're gonna just rip up your tissue paper. First, you'll of course add a layer of glue and then press your tissue paper into place. Now, the reason why I am applying this tissue paper is to help create some stability to this box as well as some beautiful texture. I'm 
Um, the other reason why too I am adding this tissue paper is to cover up some of the red because I didn't want the red color to show through. So I'm just going to continue to add my tissue paper until I've got my box covered up the way I like. Once your box is all covered up, then you're going to allow it to dry really well before you move on to your next step. So here's our box all dry and now it's time to paint it. Again, I'm using my cream craft paint and I'm going to apply two to three coats of the paint. It really depends on how good of a coverage your paint has. Uh, this particular brand, I believe I picked it up from my local dollar store. The coverage wasn't the best, so I ended up having to apply, uh, I think it was three coats of paint. Here's our box all nice and dry and you can see how much better this is looking. So now I'm going to be using this piece of sheet moss that I had picked up from my local dollar store. You can get these at Dollar Tree as well. I'm attaching it to the inside of our shadow box that we made using some hot glue. This part is optional. I'm going to add some preserved reindeer moss to fill in around the sides of the sheet moss. I wanted full coverage of the moss on the back side of our frame. So that's why I decided to do this step, but you don't have to just create this any way you'd like. It's your beautiful nature inspired artistic piece. So as always, if you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love to add branches and nature to my projects. And this one I thought would be great with some sticks that I had in my stash. So I'm just gonna add them here and there inside onto the moss using some hot glue. And now I've decided to add some butterflies. Again, these are those paper butterflies. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree. And I wanted some dimension, so I am gluing some wood beads onto the backside of each of these paper butterflies. That will help them to pop against the moss, but also help them so they don't get bent and warped if you try to glue them to the branches. So here they are all ready to go, and I'm now I'm just figuring out my placement. So another option would be to use some florals or some birds, use whatever you have in your stash or whatever you love in nature. So I attached those butterflies using some hot glue. Next, I wanted to distress this piece. So I am using some distress oxide in, I believe it's the frayed burlap. It's my favorite one, honestly, put out by Ranger and I applied that with a makeup sponge just all over and that really helps to pop the texture that we created with that tissue paper. So for another additional natural touch, I'm gluing some branches on the outside of our frame as you can see here. This part is totally optional, of course. Feel free to create this however you would love. So I really like these Tim Holtz words. They're so fun to use and I'm finding one that would work great for this. I thought this live gently upon the earth would be a really pretty touch. I'm going to distress the edges using my fairy burlap um, ink and then I will just press that into place. I do add a little bit of extra glue after this. Um, the, it wasn't sticking the greatest so once that's complete you can then put it on display I have this on a beautiful easel that I had recreated and I am absolutely in love with this piece. I still, again, use this one as well. So this next one is an actual trash to treasure that is garden inspired. I had this ceramic boot vase and as you can see, it broke and I thought it was such a cute piece. I wanted to reuse it somehow. So I am adding some floral foam to the inside of the boot as well as the toe. I'm just cutting them pieces down and then gluing them into place with hot glue. Next, you're going to want to use some moss of some kind. I am actually using a mix of Spanish moss as well as the preserved reindeer moss. You can glue your moss into place as needed. Just be careful that you don't add too much as we are going to be adding some stems into place and I didn't want it to be too clogged up uh, with the glue. 
This little piece was actually gifted to me when one of my kids was born and I just couldn't let it go. So I'm so glad I was able to find another use for it. So now I'm going to be adding some succulents. You can use succulents from Dollar Tree. These ones are from my local dollar store. I know Michael's has a beautiful selection as well. And I am going to be using some hot glue to put these into place. This is optional. If your stems are nice and long, you don't have to do this, but I just decided to do that just to help keep them in place. So just add as many as you'd like until you get the look that you like. And then next I decided to add these beautiful floral stems from Dollar Tree. They are my absolute favorite. I'm so glad that they keep coming out with some new and different ones every year. So again, I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to put these into place. That'll just help to break up that um, color. Uh, it's all green and I love green, don't get me wrong, but I just felt like you couldn't really see the individual succulents very well, so I thought this would help to just to break it up a little bit. You can fill it up with florals as well. I just hope this has inspired you to repurpose a ceramic container that you love or has some meaning to you. I think this turned out so cute and I love it, and I think it looks so nice for the summertime. Uh, perfect garden-inspired decor. So for this project, you're going to need some of those LED battery operated lights from Dollar Tree and dried flowers. I'm using some hydrangea. You'll also need some copy paper, tape and scissors. And I am going to be using some gold glittered hairspray. I took the hydrangea outside and I sprayed it with that glitter and it turned out really, really pr pretty. So this is actually one of my original videos and it is one of my favorites. So for this, you're going to need your paper and you're going to need to tape that paper onto your candle, like I just showed you. And then you wanna cut it down to size so it'll fit around your candle. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing that. Well, these LED candles are actually covered in wax and I knew that the hot glue would not stick to that wax. So I'm like, okay, how can I do this? I'm like, I'm gonna cover it up with paper. So that's what I'm doing here and it works out really well. So I just, again, tape the paper into place and you can see the gold glitter spray on the hydrangeas. It looks really pretty. So next you're going to cut your flowers down into clusters uh, you can also use something like a pansy or like little roses, whatever you have that is dried. I know leaves would look, look really pretty. Uh, just adjust these steps according to whatever you're going to be using. So for me, I'm cutting these stems down into small little clusters and then I'm going to glue them on using the hot glue. I'm just pressing the flowers into the glue and this works really well can see how well it works right here and it just creates such a pretty look. So I'm just going to continue to fill the candle piece with my hydrangeas. I think this would be so pretty for a garden wedding as well. Even a baby shower or Mother's Day if you have any of these dry florals in place. The other option would to be used using um four full florals like i know you can get faux uh, hydrangeas as well that would be a really pretty touch too so i'm just trimming off any excess that's preventing it from sitting flat and then i kind of shake it off a little bit to remove any of the little loose pieces and <laughs> isn't this just so pretty this seriously has been one of my favorite projects that i have created i just think it looks gorgeous so when it's ready to be used, you want to make sure that you just pull the tab off the bottom and turn it on. This is really delicate and fragile, so just be careful, but it looks amazing. <laughs> I really, really love how this turned out.
Okay, so this is gonna be a really fun and whimsical piece. You're going to need a glass jar from Dollar Tree, some fairy lights, some moss, some little gnome figurines, and all the additional pieces to create this piece. So this is such a fun one, it really is. So this is the jar I picked up from Dollar Tree, and this is a foam block, again, from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut the foam down to size so it'll fit inside my jar. I decided to cut my foam piece in half. That way here, it doesn't take up too much room inside the jar because I'm gonna be adding some additional stuff inside. So once you've got the size figured out, you can glue the foam piece into place. And now we're gonna attach our battery pack. So I already installed the batteries and you wanna make sure that the lid is exposed so you can replace them as needed. And you also wanna make sure you can access the switch. I am gluing it into place on the inside of the lid. And then I'm gluing down the wires on the inside of the lid. The glue works really well for this. It doesn't damage my wire in any way. So I did measure to make sure that this battery pack was going to work inside the lid before I went ahead and did this step. So just keep that in mind if you're using a different lid. So I'm gonna start by um, filling the lights inside, but I only added a few, and then I am going to layer in some moss. Use something pokey just to help push the moss into place. We wanna cover up that foam. So now I'm going to start to decorate. I am going to create myself a cute little sign and this little chalkboard sign I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm just using a white gel pen. You can see how well that stands out and you can put any little saying that you would like on your piece. You can fill this with any decorative elements that you'd like but I, um, I decided that I was going to create a little gnome garden. So. The back side of our sign was really bright and stark, so I decided to coat that with some black paint just so it doesn't stand out too much. So now I'm gonna start to layer my paste pieces in. I have these faux foam stones, moss stones that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue those into place, and some of them I'm going to lay flat, others I am leaving upright, and here I am cutting one of them in half just so I have some different dimension. So at this point, it's just all about layering. So I'm gonna to continue to add a few lights and fill up with some moss where needed. And then I'm going to add my sign. It did need to be cut down a little bit. It was a little too tall. So I just snipped that off and put it into place. And then I decided I wanted to use these really cute and adorable figurines that I had picked up from Dollar Tree a while back. They still carry these. Uh, they have different styles now, so you'll just have to check out your local store. So I'm just gonna glue them into place just in different spots within my jar until I got get the look that I like. I also had some little animal figurines, little cute little deer and a hedgehog and a bunny. Just use whatever you can find. So I wanted to give it a bit more of a gardeny look. So again, I'm using these florals from Dollar Tree. They are gorgeous. <laughs> Seriously, I just love them so, so much. So I'm just snipping a few pieces off and then I'm gonna glue those into place. This part, of course, is optional. Add anything that you would love to use. So I'm gonna again add a few more of the lights inside and I just felt like it needed a little bit more so I decided to, of course, use my foraged branches or twigs that I had in my stash. I'm cutting them down to size and then you're able to kind of wrap the wire around some of them as well if you feel like you need some height for some of your lights.
So at this point you can put the lid on and then it's ready to use. You could also cover your lid up with some moss if you'd love that look. I had seen that in a, another person's project but I just kept mine simple and I love it. I think this would be great as a night light or outside on your patio just for some ambiance. I think it turned out so cute. This would be a really fun project to make with kids as well. Our first DIY is going to be a thrift flip. I received this kettle from my mom and I could see that it had huge potential. I'm going to start off by removing the handle as I won't be needing that part and I won't be needing the lid either. So once you have that removed, you can then start to use some gesso. Now I love to use gesso, it's a primer and it works really well to prep a surface for craft paint. A lot of times craft paint doesn't adhere very well. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before, but it definitely chips off when I use it. So I love to use gesso first. So I add a coat all over the kettle and allow it to dry well. Once your gesso is all dry, you can then use some craft paint in the color of your choosing. I'm using cream and, and it's kind of like a, an antique white color. I give the kettle three coats of my craft paint and allow it to dry well in between coats. So my paint is all nice and dry and now I'm going to start to decorate it. I am using this beautiful napkin. As you can see, it's got beautiful garden roses and I'm going to remove the plies from underneath. This is a three ply napkin. You could use any pattern you'd like and you could also use tissue paper if you'd like or fabric, wrapping paper, but I'm choosing to use this napkin. So I am going to tear out the images that I wanna use. I have this beautiful butterfly and as you can see, it's got a really nice rough raw edge and that's what I, I'm going for. So I'm gonna continue to tear out the images I'd like and then I will show you the next step. So I have a stack of the roses and some butterflies and now I'm gonna be using a matte decoupage glue. You could use Mod Podge as well, but I really like the Deco Art brand or the Art Mind, Artist Mind brand from Michaels. So now I'm just going to figure out my placement for my images. This is completely up to you and it depends on the type of pattern that you are using. I am loving this gardeny look and I love these little butterflies. They're so, so beautiful. So once you have the placement figured out, you can start to add some decoupage onto your kettle or any surface that you're using and then gently place your napkin over top. As you can see, I just gently press it into the glue and then I'll go over top with my decoupage glue. And if you miss some spots underneath, you can just take your paintbrush and gently go underneath and that will just help give you a bit more glue underneath and then you can continue to seal it all in. So as you can see, this one, I've got it kind of wrapping around where the handle will be. I wanted to do that so it had a bit more of a cohesive look. And then I just continue to add my glue until it's all covered and I've created a beautiful pattern all, all over my kettle. I have torn some smaller little pieces so I could have some that are around the spout as well as the upper lip of my kettle. I just find that that just helps to have a cohesive pattern all over my kettle. So once you have the desired pattern that you'd like, 
can go in and give the entire piece a coat of your decoupage glue. That will help seal all your, any raw edges down as well as seal up the craft paint. You'll want to be gentle with the application over your napkin as you don't want to create any smudges as I accidentally did at one point, but I was able to fix it. So just be careful when you are going over top of the napkin still with your paintbrush. Once you've given it a coat of your decoupage glue, you can set it aside and allow it to dry well. Here it is all dry and now I'm going to create my handle. You'll need wood beads, some tools, along with a sturdy gauged wire and your hot glue gun. Now I'm trying to find a bead that will fit over those holes as you can see there and I've got a medium and a large size bead and I'm going to create a loop using some rounded needle nose pliers and I'm going to create that hoop to fit inside the hole where my handle was. Now I did have to do kind of some you know some middle plating and some figuring out here but I wanted that so then it, my hot glue had something to grip onto and help to hold that wire into place. So now I'm going to string on my beads in my desired pattern. You could use any beads you'd like. You can paint these or stain these if you'd like but I wanted the raw wood color to match the rest of my pot. So once you've got your placement figured out, you can then generously apply some glue inside the hole and press that wire inside. Now the glue is going to surround that wire and help to hold it in place. I'm just adding another little dab of hot glue and placing that bead over top and there you can see that it's all covered up. So now I am going to do the same thing on the opposite end of my wire. I'm just removing some of the beads as I found that it was just a little bit too bulky. And again, this just kind of takes some playing around with, but I did figure it out and it worked really well in the end. And here is the wood bead handle. I love how it turned out. Now here is our kettle all dressed up with some greenery. I love how this is so gardeny and fresh and farmhouse perfect for some summer and spring home decor. So I'm doing another thrift flip for this DIY. I find wood bowls at the thrift store all the time and I love them. I'm going to give this bowl again a coat of gesso. I wanted to cover up this slick surface as well as cover up this dark stain. I do end up having to add two coats of the gesso and I allow it to dry well in between coats. I'll give a coat of the gesso on the outside as well as the inside of the bowl. So the gesso has dried well and now you can go in and add your favorite craft paint color. I'm going with this lush foliage green from Deco Art. I love this color. I think it's so beautiful for spring and summer. So I'm going to give this bowl three coats of the paint. I'm going to do the outside of the bowl as well as the edge and I'm going to be doing something different on the inside of this bowl. I do end up giving it three coats of the paint. So now I'm going to do the inside. I'm going to be using this dark gray. I picked up this dark gray at Michael's and I'm going to give the inside of the bowl two coats of the gray paint. Allow it to dry in between coats. So here it is all nice and dry and now I'm going to go in and using a makeup sponge I'm going to apply some silver paint. Now if you dab it on it gives it a bit more of a textured look and I'm wanting to create a galvanized tin look. So as you can see I'm just dabbing it and it's really creating a really neat texture. 
I'm being careful when I apply it around the edge. I will have to go in and touch up in spots, but you can see how a bit of the dark gray is showing through underneath. I just love how that is looking. I think it's such a cool technique. So here you can see I'm just touching up this the edges here with my beautiful green paint. I think it's such a pretty gardeny color. I love it so much. It's so fresh. Now I'm going to be using some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. I love these rub-ons. They're so beautiful. I'm going to be cutting out the roses and um, some butterflies and flowers from this selection. And then I'm also going to be cutting out some of the greenery from the other selection of rub-ons. You can use anything you'd like on this, but I really loved this garden look. So once you have your images cut out, you'll need a craft stick and I've got some scissors just set aside here just in case I need to trim some more. Here I'm just kind of figuring out a basic placement for my images, but it doesn't really matter. You can just do whatever you'd like, but I'm going to start to layer my pieces on the inside and using my craft stick, I'm going to rub onto the transfer. And then you can just kind of lift it to check to make sure you've got a good transfer happening. And I do. So I just continue to layer my pieces. Rub-ons are so much fun to use. I don't know if any of you have used them yet, but if you see them in Dollar Tree, definitely pick them up. They are a lot of fun. So you can apply as many of these transfers as you'd like. You could use tissue paper if you'd prefer. But one thing I do recommend is adding some varnish over top that will help to seal in the rub-ons and protect the surface. So I give the entire bowl a coat of my varnish, let it dry, and then you've got a beautiful garden-inspired decor piece. I'm so in love with this. I am so happy with how it turned out. For this next project, I dove into my stash of scrap fabric and I found this beautiful piece that's got these beautiful garden roses and I'm going to be cutting some strips of about an inch and a half and I'm going to just scrunch them up to create a raw edge. Now you'll need several pieces. I love this fabric. It's so beautiful. You'll also need a tin from the recycling bin. This is a literal trash to treasure. <laughs> so I'm going to be wrapping this tin up with these strips of fabric. You'll need a little dab of glue to start. And then you're going to start to wrap your fabric around. Apply a little bit of hot glue here and there along the way just to help hold your fabric into place. So I'm going to just continue to wrap the fabric around the tin. When you get down to the end, like here, you're going to gently start to bring your fabric down and then you're going to continue to work around your tin. Once you get down to the bottom, you just want to continue to add your strips of fabric until you've got that bottom edge all covered up. You can trim off the excess and then glue that into place. And then I'm going to flip my tin upside down and trim off all that excess fabric that's on the bottom. And then you can start to decorate the inside. So now I'm going to create a beautiful garden bouquet using some full florals. These ones are from Dollar Tree and then I also have some from a store called Dollarama. And what I like to do is just trim down the stems, but I like to separate the wires and then I just kind of interweave them amongst each other. I don't always cut these pieces apart. I just create a beautiful bouquet and it looks like I've gone out to the garden and picked these stems. There's no right and wrong here. Just be creative with what you have.
So once you have the desired look, you can put your bouquet in your tin and leave it at this, but I like to go one step further. Here, I'm just adding a few more of the white flowers just to help break up the color a little bit, but I also always love to add a touch of nature. So I have these branches that I collected and I'm just gonna stick a few sprigs in amongst my flowers. I just love this look so much. I think it makes a, bo a faux bouquet look a lot more realistic. And here we have this beautiful farmhouse garden inspired bouquet arrangement. farmhouse DIY I'm going to be using these large wood beads and you'll need some tissue paper you want a smaller floral pattern and some matte decoupage glue and some paint brushes now this tissue paper is from Dollar Tree and I'm going to tear out the images as you can see I have my wood bead on a paintbrush I'm using the paintbrush as my holder as I'm going to be decoupaging these little pieces onto the wood bead. So here I'm just applying my decoupage glue and then you're going to want to press the tissue all over the wood bead. So you can see how I'm pushing the tissue paper down and around the bead so it forms around our wood bead and I do have quite a bit of the decoupage glue on here. I'm tearing some smaller pieces of the tissue paper and I'm going to continue to add some glue and then layer my pieces of tissue onto the bead. Once your bead is covered with the tissue paper, you're going to want to go in and give the entire bead a coat of your decoupage glue. I like to then just kind of push the tissue paper in and around so the hole isn't blocked off. And then using a jar, I place the paintbrush inside and allow it to dry well. Here is my wood bead all dry. And then for the next step, you're going to need this, a wood tag. And again, I am going to decoupage this beautiful floral tissue paper. I think it's just such a beautiful pattern. And I'm going to apply the pieces of tissue onto the tag. Again, same idea. You're just going to layer your pieces over top of each other until your tag is covered. And then you'll set it aside to dry. I do both the front side and the back side of the tag. Before I do the back side of this tag, I just trim off any of the excess once it has dried, and then I continue to cover the other side. I'm just poking a hole through just to make sure that I don't seal up that hole as we are going to need that hole. Now I'm going to be using this beautiful green hemp twine and I'm going to create a tassel. Now I'm sure you've seen the tassels created many different ways. I just wrap it several times around my fingers and then I'm going to use a really long piece and tie it through the loops as shown here. I'm then going to take an extra piece and I am going to first off cut through all my loops and then taking that extra piece of twine, I'm going to tie it around the top to keep my cluster all together. I'm just adding a touch of hot glue just to reinforce that knot and there we have our tassel. So now I'm going to be using some tape and I am going to wrap it around on the opposite end of our long piece of twine 
And this way here, it'll be easier to thread on our beads. So as I'm sure you know by now, we're gonna be creating a wood bead garland. I have never made a wood bead garland and I haven't seen anybody do decoupage beads before. So I thought this would be really beautiful and fun for a garden inspired farmhouse look. So I'm using these dark stain wood beads that I picked up from the thrift store. I think they're so beautiful. I really like the shape. And I had created a pattern where I went three of the wood stain and then one large decoupage bead. So I'm just twisting my bead over top of that extra little twine piece as you can see here and that will help hold it all into place. And then I continue to thread all my wood beads on until I have the desired length. So I have the desired length of my wood bead garland and now I'm going to be adding my wood tag. But first I want to add this beautiful laser cut wood embellishment. I've seen these both at Dollar Tree and Dollarama. I just used some hot glue to attach it. I'm just creating a cohesive look for my wood bead garland. Now I'm just going to tie on the tag to the opposite end of my garland. And there we have a beautiful garden inspired farmhouse wood bead garland. next garden inspired project I grabbed this garden rock from Dollar Tree and I thought it was so so beautiful I am going to give it two to three coats of this cream colored craft paint I didn't seal it off with any gesso this time I found that the craft paint actually adhered really well to this garden rock and as you can see I'm getting the paint in all the little nooks and crevices and see it took really well so now I'm going to give this entire garden rock a coat of some varnish I need to seal up the craft paint at this point before I do my next step once you have given your rock a coat of the varnish allow to dry well once dry, you can then go in and add some stain. I'm going to be using this walnut stain from Deco Art, and you'll need a stiff bristle brush as well as a rag. And you're just going to dab the stain into all the little nooks and crevices as you can see here. And using a rag, you'll want to wipe off any of the excess. This will create a really kind of earthy, grungy look like an old weathered rock that you would find in a garden. I love how this is turning out. This stain works really, really well for this particular technique. Continue to add as much stain as you would like until you get this beautiful decorative garden rock. As always, I would absolutely love to know which one was your favorite. So this next nature inspired project was actually inspired by my friend Mumdas from creative DIY by Mumdas. I'll have her channel link down below for you to check it out. So I have got this beautiful shadow box that I had in my stash and I'm using strips of fabric and a fabric scrap, also some branches and twigs. You'll need moss and a, an assortment of lichens and bark, whatever type of natural elements you have on hand. So I'm going to start off by gluing this foam block on the middle portion of this 
off this uh, shadow box. It's got a really nice thick frame. It is a beautiful piece. I've had it in my stash for quite a few years, so I wanted to recreate something new and different in it. So I'm gonna use some foraged moss that I had collected from the forest. And just so you know, I am going to have a video coming up here soon, hopefully in the next month or two, I'm gonna go out foraging and I'm gonna take all of you with me so you can see what I like to forage for and how I take care of it afterwards. So I'm going to just continue to cover up my foam with the moss until I've got that all hidden away. So now I am going to be applying this fabric onto a piece of cardstock using this glue that I picked up from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to glue some scraps down onto the cardstock. I am using green cardstock. Apply a generous amount of this glue. And the nice thing about this glue is that it remains flexible. It is, um, I believe this is the Craft Metally brand. I know Crafter Square has a brand out now or a glue out now as well that's nice and clear and flexible. So use whatever you have on hand. You could use a fabric tack as well. So I'm just gonna continue to add some strips of fabric to the paper and allow it to dry. While that's drying, I am now going to be using these strips of t-shirt material and I'm gonna create some roses. So it's just folding and rolling the fabric in on itself, just as you see here. You can slow this video down a bit right here if you wanna see me do this in slow motion. But the key is to add a little bit of glue, fold the one edge over, and then start to fold and roll. And then you're going to use some hot glue along the way to help hold your piece together. You can see here how the flower shape is taking place just by the hot glue and folding and rolling your fabric in around itself, just like this. So Mom does actually use some real dried roses in hers, but I had all these scraps and I used to make rolled fabric flowers all the time. They're so easy to make. And I thought this would be a perfect project to use these on. So you just want to trim down the fabric and then finish gluing the pieces into place. And then you just want to trim off a little bit of the excess. And again, just add some hot glue on the underside and glue any of the extra strips down and cut as needed. So I'm just gonna show you this step once more on this orange fabric. And you guys, this is seriously a great way to use up fabric. I find that the t-shirt material or something soft like this is easier, but you can use any fabric that you have in your stash. You could even use some fabric that you've dyed yourself. That would be really pretty as well. So I'm just gonna continue to create this flower and then I'll show you what we will do with them. So these were really fun to make. I made them in all different colors here. And now I'm gonna create some leaves. So this fabric is all nice and dry. And I'm just gonna cut some basic leaf shapes out of this. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just see how simple this leaf is right here. 
turned out really well. And this is the reason why I chose a green colored cardstock. So I'm just gonna continue to cut some pieces out until I feel I have enough to work with my piece. So here are all my leaves and I trim them off as needed. Next, I am just trimming up these branches and I am going to glue these into place. These ones are really cool because they're kind of uh, twisty and gnarly and they've got a really cool lichen growing on them. Just go and forage on a walk and see what you can find. So we'll just glue them randomly in place on top of the moss. You could also use some floral wild wire to help anchor them. I just use my hot glue. Now I'm just going to go in and add some lichen, again, that I had foraged. I just tucked it in here and there. And now I'm going to start to add my flowers. I'm just going to lay them out in place first before I glue them. So I have the placement that I like. And then you can go ahead and use your hot glue to glue them all into place. Okay, so now to add the leaves. I decided to add some dimension by folding the leaves in half. That way here, it just doesn't look like a flat piece of fabric. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just tuck them in here and there. And again, just figure out my placement first and then I will glue them into place. So just for another natural element, I am adding some birch bark paper that I had in my stash. This is the actual bark paper off of birch bark. <laughs> I forage my birch bark off of the forest floor. I never remove it from the trees, just so you know. And I love to use it in different projects. So I just tuck them in here and there. And here is the piece. I have to say a big thank you to Mumdas. She inspired me and I am so grateful for her. She is an amazing, talented crafter. So here is the final piece and you can lay it flat as is, or you can just put it up on a pedestal or this one is nice and chunky enough that it fits on the shelf. So for all our fire pots, we're going to be using some tin cans. The first one, I am going to be scratching it with a sanding block as I am creating a rusted technique. You need to get the sanding block in the grooves and it's good to work on a protective surface. Now I need to just remove any of the bits of adhesive left from the label. And you can use any size tin you like. Okay, so now it's time to do the rusting technique. You'll need some hydrogen peroxide and I put that into a spray bottle and you're going to spray down your tin can. Now you'll sprinkle it with some salt and allow it to sit and corrode. There will be a reaction between the hydrogen peroxide and the salt and it will start to corrode. This was just after about 30 minutes. You wanna to continue to apply the hydrogen peroxide and this is the effect that you will gain after three days. Now, I had done a tin can over a year ago and you can see here how much it has rusted. At this point, you could give your can a coat of clear sealant to stop the corrosion. So I have my fuel canister and it is short. So I am just putting some pieces inside my tin can just to elevate my canister. I have a piece of foil and just uh, a little basket and I put those inside and now I am just going to uh, flatten things out so my canister sits level. You could put some rocks inside your tin can if you choose. Just use anything you have on hand. So now I'm going to loosen the lid with a flathead screwdriver. So this fuel canister is chafing fuel that I picked up from Dollar Tree. You can buy fuel canisters at home improvement stores along with any garden center, just look around. So as you can see, there's a bit of a gap around my fuel canister. So I'm just providing a little bit of a sleeve to fit around my canister as I don't want any gaps in around it. 
because I am going to be covering it up with some pebbles and I don't want those pebbles to fall down. So I'm just using some tin foil and just scrunching it until it fits around my fuel canister and then I am going to place my canister back inside my tin. I have a selection of small pebbles and larger pebbles, but I need to put my lid back over my canister first so the rocks don't fall through. And now I'm just going to add the smaller pebbles to camouflage all the tin foil and the canister. Continue to add as many of the pebbles as you like. I'm even slipping some in between there just to really help camouflage the canister as well as the tin foil. Once you have your rocks in place, you can remove the lid and then you can take this outside and light it up. So our next tin, I am going to be using this adhesive backed floral sheet moss. As you can see, it's got the backing there and an alternative would be to use some preserved reindeer moss. This would give a lot more of a fluffy kind of look. I'm going to be going with the sheet moss and I'm just going to measure out how much I need. As you can see, this sheet does not quite fit. So I am going to cut it down to size by marking out the height on the back side of my floral sh moss sheet. Now, if you used a different size can, you might not need to do this step. It just really depends on the type of container you are using. So I've marked out the height of moss that I need and then I'm just taking my scissors and cutting it out. I'm just partially removing the backing and then I'm going to stick my tin can on to the moss. Now I am going to add a little bit of hot glue as I really wanted to make sure that this sticks to my container. I don't know how strong that adhesive is. Now I'll just continue to remove the backing and roll my can onto the moss. Once you get to the end, you can add another bead of hot glue and press your edge into place. And now I'm just going to measure another piece just to fit into that gap. Again, this part is completely optional. It all depends on the size of container you will be using. Once you have your little scrap piece measured out, you can then remove the backing and put it into place. Again, I'm adding a little bit of hot glue first and then I'll push it into place. Now you're gonna see that I still do have a little bit of a seam. So I am gonna go back in with some additional moss that I had on hand and I'm going to camouflage that seam. So I'm just going to be using some hot glue and then pressing that moss over the seam. And then you can take some scissors and just trim it off so it's nice and even with the rest of the container. Now as you look at your container, if there's any additional little gaps with moss, you can just go back in and fill it in and again just trim off the excess. So just as my last tin, I need to elevate my canister. So I'm just going to use all the seam pieces that I used in the last little mini fire pot. And just as our last tin, I'm using some pebbles to camouflage the canister and tin foil. Remove the lid, trim off any excess and take it outside and light it up. For our 
our next mini fire pot, you're going to use some birch bark or any type of bark that you have on hand. I'm just gonna pull some strips off of this, a large piece that I had foraged from the forest. Now, when you collect some birch bark, please just pick up the birch bark that you can find on the forest floor. You do not wanna peel it off of the trees. So now I've got all my pieces ready to go and using some hot glue, I'm just going to press some pieces like a puzzle onto my tin. You will be using quite a bit of hot glue for this project, so just bear that in mind. And as you add the bark onto the glue, you're gonna want to push and press the bark into the glue and allow it to set up. You can see here how all my pieces are starting to fit together like a puzzle. So one thing that I like to do is I will take a piece of the bark and trim it off with some scissors and then I slip it underneath a raw natural edge that's already attached to the tin. So you're going to generously apply some hot glue and then place the bark into place as shown. So you can definitely see how this has a bit more of a natural look when you do it this way. It does take quite a bit of glue, but I'm really loving the look. Continue to add some pieces of bark until you have your tin all covered up. So I have my tin all covered now, and I'm just adding a few little extra bits here and there. You can add some moss to this, that would be really cool, or some lichens. So again, you're going to need to elevate your canister as needed, and I'm just going to be using the same items as before, along with the pebbles, and then you can take it outside and light it up. As always, I always like to know which one is your favorite. I have to say I'm leaning to the birch bark. So this next project really is a labor of love. You're going to need a clear glass wine bottle and some napkin or tissue paper in whatever pattern you like. I have this birch bark pattern in my stash and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. You're also going to need some decoupage. So I am just going to be cutting down a piece of this napkin and I'm only gonna cut it so it goes part way around our glass bottle. You can see right here, I'm only gonna cut, I, I honestly don't know how wide this is, I just kind of wung it. So next you're going to want to add a layer of your decoupage glue onto your bottle in the section where your napkin or tissue paper is going to lay. So once you have enough glue, you're going to press that glue onto the right side of your pattern, just like I did right there. That way here, you can see the pattern coming through the bottle. Next, you'll want to seal up your tissue with another coat of your decoupage glue. I am using the matte finish. So I've allowed it to dry and you can see how beautiful the image is coming through. It looks so cool. So now I'm just using a box to stabilize the bottle and now I'm going to use some low tack tape to create a frame. So again, I just kind of eyeballed this. I didn't have any exact measurements, but I knew I wanted to create a scene. So I needed to make sure that you could see inside well enough. So <clears throat> I just cut the strips of um, tape down and like I said, just kind of wung it and <laughs> created a frame just like you see right here. So now I am going to be using some acrylic paint. This is not craft paint and it's in the color white. 
You could also use some gesso or some chalk paint. Now that I look at this, I probably would use gesso. Gesso is a great primer to help really seal things down onto slick surfaces, but this particular uh, acrylic paint worked well, so I just went with it. You'll wanna give this two coats of the white acrylic paint and allow it to dry well in between each coat. And I went all the way up to the bottle top. Okay, so you can see I've got two coats of white paint on here. And next step will be to add black paint. Now, there are several steps to this particular piece and they are all very important. So I'm going with the black paint because we're gonna be adding some lights to this and I didn't want the glow of light to come through. So the black paint will prevent that from happening. So I put the black paint on and now I'm going over it again with white paint. Now, the reason why I'm doing the white paint again is because we're gonna go over top of this with our birch bark patterned napkin again. And if I went and decoupaged it over top of that, the black will show through our napkin. I didn't want that look. It would look really gray and kind of dingy and I didn't want that look at all. So I just gave it a coat of our white acrylic paint. Once that has dried, then you can remove your tape. And this worked so well. I was so happy with how this little frame window turned out. Look how good that looks. So if you have any extra excess paint on your clear section of your glass, you just need to rub it off with some water and a rag. All right, so now it's time for another layer of our paper napkin. So as I said, you really wanna do this if you don't want that black showing through. So you could cover this up with say some flour, uh, tissue paper or napkin. And if you had the black, it would really show through and make it look really dark and dingy. If you want that grungy look, then go for it. But I really wanted this birch bark pattern to pop on this bottle. So I knew I needed that white background. So again, you just need to put a coat of Mod Podge down and press your napkin into place. And I decided to work on sections. So I did one little section there, add some more glue, press your napkin into place again and continue that until you get all the way around. And then you will need a coat of Mod Podge again. I decided to just trim off the excess here and there as needed just to keep our little clear window open. And I added some of the napkin on the little bottom portion as well as the upper neck of the bottle. So you're gonna set your bottle aside and allow it to dry really well. So here is our bottle all nice and dry and you can see how great the pattern of the birch bark is popping on this bottle. So next I am going to start to fill our bottle and this is a little tricky I admit but it's really effective. So I'm gonna shove some uh, preserved reindeer moss using a little paintbrush that's nice and long and I'm just going to push that down through the neck of the bottle to cover the bottom. So I've got these small little branches that I had foraged and I'm going to place some of those down inside as well. And as you can see, I also have some battery operated fairy lights that have got the cork stop. So I have those linked in my Amazon affiliate store, but I have seen them in dollar stores as well as at Michael's. Just check out all the different stores in your location. So these are awesome for projects like this, or even if you have a smaller project where you don't want the battery pack showing, these are great. So I'm just gonna start to place some of the lights inside of the bottle. I'm not putting them all in at once. And you're gonna probably need a little help 
to get these down inside. So again, I'm using my long paintbrush. Now I'm going to dive into my stash of sticks as well as my paper butterflies. And I like to create some dimension by bending the paper butterflies a little bit. I'll glue one of the butterflies onto a branch near the top, just like you saw right there. And I am gonna be doing a total of three of these, but you'll see here in a minute that I'm gonna end up needing one more butterfly, but it will be further down on the bottom of a stick. So I'm shoving some branches inside of our bottle and I put that branch upside down just because I felt it created a bit more texture and interest. You'll wanna to continue to add some of your lights and then you could also wind some of the lights around a branch. So to get the butterflies inside, you can see they're small enough that I was able to bend them and push them inside and they were not damaged. Again, using your long paintbrush or stick, whatever you're using, you can use that to help to manipulate things inside of the bottle so that they are in the place that you like. So again, this was a little bit tricky, but it's so effective. So here is a butterfly that I glued on the lower portion of the branch because I discovered that my butterflies were all hanging out near the top of the bottle and I wanted one lower down. So that's why I glued that one lower down on the branch. So just continue to add any of the pieces that you'd like. And you can see my little, um, paintbrush there, it's able to get right inside and I'm able to push things around. I was even able to push the butterflies a little bit here and there and the lights. It's all really about layering and different elements and textures until you get the look that you like. So I'm happy with how things look inside of the bottle, but I felt like it was unfinished on the outside. So I decided to glue some branches around the window to create a frame. So I am using some of these branches that have got like different stems shooting off just to create a really fun and whimsical natural look. I think this piece would be great to create, say for a wedding gift or something special for somebody. It's so unique. I'm so in love with this. I, I seriously, I, like, I still have it and I still use it. I still use a lot of my pieces and um, they're so, so fun. Here I'm adding just a touch of some preserved reindeer moss around the frame. And then I'm also gonna be going in and adding some of the paper butterflies. A nice little fun touch too would be to use some flowers inside and outside. A little fairy inside would be really cute as well. Just another option too would be create a silhouette of a fairy uh, from your say Cricut machine or whatnot and put that on the backside and then do all these different layers. There's just so many ways you can create this. So just to finish off the top edge, I'm adding a little bit of moss around the neck just like you see right here. And here is our piece. I'm gonna be showing it to you unlit as well as lit. Oh, you guys, seriously, I love this. I know I keep saying that, don't I? <laughs> but I really do. This is such a special piece to me. I don't know, there's just something about it. I just love how unique it is and how natural it looks. Such a beautiful piece for anybody's home decor. So this next project is going to be an easy one. I am just going to be using a selection of some foraged finds. This is a gnarly piece of birch bark and I've got moss as well as lichens. 
And I'm layering these things in this house frame that I had picked up from a store called Jisk. Now I have seen stuff similar to this at Walmart and um, other home decor stores such as, you know, Michael's has a home decor section. Just look to see what you can find in your local stores. So this piece is just all about layering your foraged finds. Again, I will have a foraged video for you coming up. It was by request by several people. So I'm just waiting for the weather and the timing to be right before I go out to show you all of that. So next I'm just going to tuck in some succulents. These ones are from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has amazing succulents but you could add flowers instead. Little mushrooms would be cute. You could turn this into a little forest, uh, like gar gnome scene or a fairy uh, garden. So next I'm going to add some fairy lights. Now I love using fairy lights in my uh, foraged decor or, you know, my natural or garden inspired decor. I don't know, there's just something about it. I really like the touch. So I'm just going to weave those in and out. And then I'm going to add some branches. Again, these are kind of some twisty, gnarly branches, and I'm just going to create some height on the inside. I'm also going to twist some of the lights around a branch just so that the lights stay um, upwards, as you saw right there. Here are some stems with some pine cones. And the other thing that's really cool about this is I am actually building this right where it's going to sit. So I am able to add a few more elements on my shelf here, and that will create just a more cohesive look so it doesn't just look like it's just floating around. So here is the finished piece. I love it. <laughs> Again, I just, I really do love it. And I hope you do too. This really was really easy. You could layer things up any way you'd like with whatever you have on hand. So this next one is a project that I had done uh, for fall, but I thought it would be really fun to recreate it for summertime as well. So this is a tin house steak that I had picked up from Dollar Tree a couple of years ago. And this little decorative piece actually pops off. So I'm just bending the wires and it slips right off. And then you're left with this little house piece. I'm removing the steak. You'll also need a hoop and some branches and a few other things. So I wasn't crazy about the orange on this one, even though I love orange, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I wanted to distress this to make it look a little bit rusty. So I'm just using some paint and I'm just going to dab it and layer it and just create a bit of a grungy look. Do this however you'd like. Um, now I know how to age tin, so I would definitely do this differently. But at the time, I hadn't learned that technique. You'll see that coming up soon. So I'm just gonna continue to grunge that up. In the meantime, I am going to just figure out my placement for my branch. So I have got this house sitting where I wanna have it and then I cut down my branch and glued that into place on my hoop. Next, you'll want to use some chalk paint and or any other paint that you'd like and cover up the orange if you're not crazy about that. And the reason why is because I am actually going to be adding some birch bark and I didn't want the orange to show through. So once the paint is dried, then you can go in and add birch bark or any other kind of bark you have. You could also use some moss if you'd like, or you can just leave it plain. So I'm just going to use some hot glue and continue to glue these pieces on. As you can see here, I left that bottom hole exposed. I just wanted to make sure I could still access it because I wanted to put those other pieces back in place. So I'm just trimming off any excess that didn't look good. And then I left that aside for now. Okay, 
Now to paint this decorative element right here. I'm using chalk paint because it sticks really well. So I'm just going to layer my colors, use any colors that you would like. And that just covers that all up. I wasn't crazy about the paint colors that Dollar Tree had used. So I thought this would look great. I wanted to age it a little bit. So I'm just using my sanding block and I am just going to rough the edges up a little bit here and there. I'm going to be using some different shades of brown just to fill in the center of this little flower. I created a sunflower, uh, but again, you could make it any way you'd like. So I'm going to just rough up the center of the flower as well, and then it's ready to be put into place. So now I'm just going to be adding a generous amount of glue onto the branch and gluing that house into place. So I have a selection of different florals and greenery, but you can use, again, anything that you'd like to um, make it suitable for spring or summer. Again, this one was for fall, but I think it could definitely transition for any time of year. You just have to switch out which uh, florals and elements you use. So I'm just going to attach them using some hot glue just here and there, as you can see. And that's it. It's ready to be hung on your door or on your wall, wherever you would like to have it. So for this next nature inspired project, it's kind of got a bit of like a cottage core look. We're going to be doing some more decoupage. So I've got a clear glass jar, some matte decoupage glue, as well as some white tissue paper. So I'm just going to um, get enough tissue paper to cover up my jar. And again, you want to add a layer of the glue and then a layer of put your tissue paper into place and then add another layer of glue on top. This particular project is an excellent way to upcycle those glass jars that we all collect. So you're gonna allow your jar to dry and then I am going to be going in and adding some washi stickers. You can get these washi stickers anywhere. These particular ones are from a store called, online store called In Love Art Shops. I'm just trimming off any of the excess white that was around the edge. And then I'm going to peel off the backing and put these stickers onto our jar. I'm using butterflies and flowers, but you can use anything you'd like. I just really wanted to kind of go with a beautiful garden cottage look. So you're just gonna continue to add as many stickers as you'd like until you get the desired look you want. Next, you can go over the entire piece with the capage glue again, and that'll help seal everything in. Next, I'm going to add just another little decorative touch, and that is some lace ribbon. You could definitely use some twine or string or anything that you'd like. I'm just gonna tie this off with a simple bow. Next, we'll be using these beautiful fairy lights again. These ones are from Dollar Tree. It's so easy. All you have to do is put the battery pack inside along with the fairy lights, and then it's ready to be used. This sits in our kids' bathroom, but it would be beautiful for a garden wedding or in the cottage, wherever you would like. I think it turned out so beautiful. 
So this is a really fun and whimsical project. It is going to be using a night light and again, a washi sticker that I picked up from In Love Art Shop, but you can get these anywhere. And you'll also need a piece of some acetate packaging. I am gonna be cutting this down to size. Now, as you can see, the night light wasn't big enough to fit my sticker, so I needed to create a larger panel to fit my sticker. So that's exactly what I'm doing here now. That's why I'm using the clear acetate. So I'm just gonna put my sticker into place and I'm pressing it down to make sure that it's smoothed out and there's no bubbles. I'm just using my bone folder and then I'm gonna trim this down so then it's just big enough so it'll still fit on our night light but again there will be some overhang which is what i want so i'm just going to trim off any of the excess packaging and then i'll show you what i do next i discovered that the bottom of this wasn't sitting flush to the bottom of our night light so i'm just trimming off that excess there and now it sits nice and flush So I'm just going to continue to just straighten out that bottom edge. I really wanted that to sit nice and flat. Once you've got that all figured out, you can then glue that piece using some hot glue. I'm being very, very careful with how much glue I add because I don't want there to be any um, distortion. So I just add a little bit at the base and then I'll add a little bit at the top two corners of the nightlight. So our image is all in place and now I just needed some stability for this piece because I am going to build a frame around our image. I am again I'm using these branches that I foraged I'm going to cut them down to size so they fit around our image. Now you wanted the overhang of the acetate so you have a place to glue your branches down. So again, I'm just going to be using my hot glue. It works really well for this. And this is again, one of those pieces that we have actually had in our home for a few years now, and it's still in great shape. So I'm just gonna to continue to add our branches until I got the edge of our acetate all covered. So now to add just another touch of whimsy, I'm using preserved reindeer moss. Now you can get these in craft stores. Uh, it's available on Amazon and you can also get this at Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna add some touches here and there. So I'm just adding a few more branches here and there and it's ready to be used. This is so, so fun. It's such a nice little touch in the evening. The glow is nice and gentle. Turned out way better than I had imagined. I'm so happy with how this is. So this next project is kind of different and unique. I used these Dollar Tree stationary containers and I spray painted them with some Rust-Oleum off-white paint and it turned out really well. I'm going to be using some dry foam and I'm gonna glue this into place on the inside of these stationary containers. So I kind of just played around with this a bit. I used some scrap foam pieces as well as some new and I just layered them up with some moss as well as just some other pieces of foam. This is preserved reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and I was able to get that down inside to camouflage the foam because you'll see in a minute of course, since this is a mesh container, you could see through. So we definitely wanted to camouflage that foam. So 
So I'm building up a base to create a floral arrangement or actually a succulent arrangement in this piece. So I'm just going to continue to layer pieces of foam until I get a workable uh, surface that I am happy with. I had this faux grass in my stash and I didn't quite like that green color so I took it out and I spray painted it with a mix of my light green as well as the off-white spray paint and I really like how it looks now. It looks a little more natural. So now I'm just going to remove some clumps of this and I'm going to glue it into place on our foam and as you could see too I covered the foam up with a bit of moss. Next comes the succulents. Again, these are from Dollar Tree and they had a clip. I removed it. Now, at this point, I should have tried to create some kind of a stem on this. It would have made life a whole lot easier, but I did figure out an alternative. So I did start off by generously applying hot glue to the succulents and then placing them and holding them till set. But as you can see, it didn't work. It all fell apart. So I have this really sturdy floral wire, wire in my stash and what I did was create a pin. And then I worked the pin in around the succulent leaves and pushed it down into the floral foam and that helped to hold it all into place. In addition, I used some uh, extra hot glue as well. So you can see here, my floral pin worked its way around the leaves and then I just push it into the foam and it was very sturdy. This piece had lasted quite a while, um, but eventually I did end up taking it apart and using all the pieces for another project, but I was really happy with how this turned out. So I'm just gonna continue to add pieces here and there until I get the look that I like. So I wanted to create another little piece to go with this. Again, I did the same process with the foam and the moss, gluing everything into place. But this time I am using these Dollar Tree florals. I just cut them down and then I just place them into the foam. You could glue these into place if you'd like, but I knew that I would want to reuse these stems. So I just took them in and just left it as is and it's perfect. I love it. Okay, so now for this next little item, I used, again, another one of those stationary holders, foam and a moss. And then I have these other, again, pieces of green, but I also had these other succulents that I had in my stash, again, from Dollar Tree. So these stems of succulents were a whole lot easier because I pulled off the main stem and there was still enough of a little bit of a stem for me to add some glue and push them into the foam. You just need to make sure you add enough glue. You could pin these ones into place as well, but I actually didn't have any troubles with this one like I did with that previous one. It turned out really cute. So I really like how this little one turned out. So you can use each of these little pieces on their own or you can put them all together to create a beautiful little vignette. Okay, so I had these glass owl drinking jars and we weren't using them because you had to hand wash them. I'm just removing the little straw stopper and I'm also using some solar lights that I picked up from Walmart. You can see that it has a 3x3 square and I am going to mark out a 3x3 square on the lid and I'm going to be using a sharpie. Don't worry if it's not exact. Once you have your square drawn out, I'm gonna be using some wire snips and I'm gonna cut into the lid. Be very careful, the edges are going to be quite sharp. 
I am cutting from the center and in towards the corners of my squares. I am now just checking to see that my square is big enough and I'll cut more if needed. Once you have the desired size, you can start to carefully bend those sharp edges into the inside of the lid as shown. I'm just pressing those down onto the back side of the lid. Now with my lid upside down on a hard surface, I'm using a hammer to flatten out those sharp edges. The top side of the lid will be a little bit rough, but you're not going to notice. Remove any excess sharp edges. I am now going to be using some Gorilla Clear Silicone Adhesive. Using the applicator that comes with the adhesive, you're just going to add a bead to the top edges on the plastic part of your solar light. You are then going to adhere the light to the inside part of the lid, flip it upside down and allow it to set. Once that part is set, you're going to run a bead on the inside just to form a seal. And I'm just running my finger along just to smooth out and to make sure there's good adhesion between the light fixture and the lid. I am now going to add the stake that would go into a pot or the ground to the bottom side of the lid. I'm going to be using hot glue and E6000. I'm going to add a generous amount of the E6000 to the bottom of the jar and then I'm going to be adding a wood bead to the bottom and then I'm going to add some hot glue and then I'm going to be placing the tube over top of the bead. I'm now going to add a generous amount of hot glue in around the base of the tube and the bottom of the jar. I am trying to add some generously so I have a really good seal. I'm just using a silicone finger protector to smooth out the glue. Once everything has set and cured, you can remove any labels needed and then start to put everything together. Don't forget to remove that little battery tab. I'm just adding the bottom stake so I can put that in the ground. And here is what they look like all lit up. First DIY, you'll need a cloche dome from Dollar Tree along with some gold leaf foil. Now I got this from a garage sale, believe it or not. You can pick it up at craft stores. I have even seen it at Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some foil glue. Now I am going to use the Renaissance brand. Some people have used Mod Podge, but I prefer the actual foil glue. And you're going to need a foam brush or a bristle brush. Now remove the cloche dome and we are going to add the adhesive to the base. Now I'm using a foam brush as you can see and I am stippling it on. I am wanting to create a vintage look to my piece. 
Now, depending on the type of brush you're using will depend on the finished look that you will achieve. If you want a really nice smooth texture, then I definitely recommend a smooth um, bristle brush. I am, as you can see, using the stippling effect and it is creating some air bubbles, but I'm okay with that. So just experiment and play. So you want it to dry until it's tacky to the touch. And then you are going to gently apply the foil. Now, as you can see, this foil is very, very fragile. So just be careful how you apply it. Here I am using a little paintbrush so I can get the foil into the corners, as you can see here. And then I'm smoothing it on as well using the paintbrush. So as you can see, I left the center portion of this empty. I didn't need the foil there. And using a soft cloth, cloth you are now going to burnish it. This is going to really help the foil to stick to the glue as well as remove any of the excess and smooth out the finish. And as you can see, it has a really, really cool vintage look. So I wanted to seal this off and I'm going to be applying this satin varnish by Deco Art, and I'm just going to be using a soft paintbrush. This part is optional. I just wanted to make sure that this was going to stick well to the plastic. Set it aside and allow the varnish to dry well. Once dry, we can now start to decorate. So I went and forged these little branches from a walk and I'm just finding one that's going to fit um, the cloche. Trim it down as needed. And then using some hot glue, you are going to generously apply some in the middle of the base. And then you're going to put your stick in and then you're going to hold it there and allow it to set. It's going to take a little bit to set. Once the branch is set up in the glue, I'm just going in and adding just a little bit extra. I don't want my branch to move. Again, you're going to let it set up again. Just hold it into place and it won't fall over. Just making sure the dome will fit over my branch. Now using some preserved reindeer moss, I'm going to cover up where all the black is by using some hot glue. I am going to apply that to the base and press the moss into place. Now I'm being careful not to apply the moss right up to the edge as I do need some room to put the dome cover back into place. So now I'm just making sure that my dome does fit and I don't need to trim anything off. And it does, I love it, it looks so pretty so far. Now using these paper butterflies. Now Dollar Tree did have these last year and I have seen them in other dollar stores as well. So have a look around. I'm going to be using a total of six and I'm gluing liked ones together. Then it doesn't look like that there's a plain backside. <laughs> You're going to be seeing these butterflies from both directions. So I just wanted to make sure it looks finished on both sides. And I'm going to attach them all together to create a total of three butterflies. Now I'm just figuring out my placement here and then using some hot glue, I am going to attach my butterflies to the branch. So I wanted this to be usable from different directions. So I'm just going to add a butterfly to the opposite side of that large one and then add the little one at the top. Once you have your butterflies in place, you can then add the dome back in place. And there you have a gorgeous high end looking piece. I have seen stuff like this in high end home decor stores. This was all on a really tight budget using Dollar Tree finds. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate it. Here is the full playlist of all the projects that I made here, along with a few extra. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.